Hello and welcome to Community Topics, number 39 of Dualist Community. I am enjoying the exploration of all the topics because there is no rhyme or reason to this conversation. There is no conversation that's specifically being had. It's just the mentality of letting go of any idea of what this conversation is that leads us to being what the conversation is. Every conversation that you have, letting go a little bit more of your expectations, of your idea of what a conversation should be, of your idea of yourself, of your idea of the people that you're talking to, allows the conversation that this is to arise. But you're not going to get there through thinking about what this conversation is because it's never going to be that. And certainly never commit to us or to the dualistic unity community or even to this discussion per se, commit to yourself, commit to what you're experiencing right now and the conflict and the suffering that goes with it and have the courage for your own reasons to explore that and gain sensitivity to that from moment to moment to moment. It has nothing to do with following a path, following a teacher, following a teaching. It really comes down to priority and that priority has to be your existence yours and yours alone, because that is the only existence that you have any sway over. That said, today's community topic is infidelity. And the reason I opened with that thought was because when we're talking about infidelity, what are we talking about in terms of fidelity? What are we talking about commitment to? Because typically when we talk about infidelity, we're talking about betraying a commitment to marriage, which is usually what this is about. But infidelity isn't just regarding marriage. And this is kind of a clue as to the mentality that came up with this. Infidelity also refers to not believing in a religion, being an infidel. And so when we're looking at the relationship that we are supposed to be faithful to, are we looking at the idea of the relationship in the same way that we look at the idea of the religion, the idea of God? Are we committing ourselves to something that is causing conflict and suffering for both people involved? Or are we committed to ourselves and our own growth and the love that can come from that, the empathy that can come from that, the relationship that can grow from that? And so it really begs the question, what are we being faithful to? Are we being faithful to the idea? or to the reality. And and so I think how a lot of times infidelity plays out is rooted in an idea of a should or a correct way to have a relationship or an expectation of what it should be. And if you're maintaining that idea or what your partner should be as opposed to what they are, what the relationship should be as opposed to what it is here and now. And that's what causes the distortion that causes you to act in a way that you feel like you need to because you have an idea of what you should be getting out of the relationship that isn't being met. But it, the problem isn't that that idea isn't being met. It's that you have an idea of what you should be getting out of it as if there's something to get out of it as opposed to just being it. Because it kind of like as we maintain an idea of like two people and then their relationship the relationship is like a third component. No, the two people are the relationship. Everything about them, everything that they share and express and all of their interactions are the relationship itself playing out in real time. The relationship isn't something separate. It's not an ideal that you need to live up to or attach to. And so that's where something like infidelity comes from is maintaining an idea and then it not matching, which it almost never does. And so that's where a lot of conflict arises from, and I think infidelity is just kind of an extreme expression of the distortion that you're experiencing between your idea of what it should be or what you should be getting out of it or your expectations of, of how they should be met by your partner, in a sense, when they're not being met, as opposed to understanding that you're a component of that relationship. You don't have to maintain an idea to be it. And then there's more fluidity. And then there's an understanding when things need a change or conversations need to be had, as opposed to thinking you need to hide 
that expectation from them and that they can read your mind and just fit that. And if they're not, then you're going to act in a certain way out of, I mean, a degree of cowardice instead of having the conversation, you just go and do something that forces a change without having to confront it. It's like one of the most passive ways of having a conversation about not being satisfied about a situation and ends up being quite cowardly and more detrimental than having the conversation would be, though the conversation in the short term seems a lot less comfortable than having going about, you know, cheating or whatever. And so it's almost an avoidance of discomfort as well. It's certainly a journey, I guess, is is the point in dealing with clients over the years. It's interesting because usually when we're talking about infidelity, we're talking about sexual infidelity. But infidelity itself is just the abandonment of that commitment to the relationship, to the experience of being together, to the idea of monogamy and all of that. And so it's really interesting. And this is kind of fun because we're talking about a commandment here. So this is some good shit, and I really enjoy that. But if we're going to talk about a commandment, then we have to talk about another commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. It's not just thou shalt not have sex with your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Why? Well, it's, unfortunately, it's a rule. Don't do that. But it should be just kind of an indicator. Like, if you are doing this, if you are fantasizing about other people, then it is entirely possible that you are already losing commitment to whatever this journey was, which may be an indicator that the journey is coming to an end, or it may be an indicator that it's time to communicate with the other person. Right. But I think that's the point is that to get to sexual infidelity. Now I'm not talking about new relationships because if you're going into a new relationship out of need and you don't have those needs satisfied, you're going to jump ship and try to satisfy that need somewhere else. And so often early relationship infidelity is, is kind of a different thing, but later relationship infidelity is something that usually happens over years and years of distance growing. And, and so the infidelity itself is just the lack of commitment to the relationship itself, or, or rather to the idea that the relationship can or, or will work or is even in the best interest. And what's funny about that is that people will resist that. They will actually think to themselves, that's a terrible thought. Like I've listened to one client after another say like, why would I be thinking this? You know, they're a wonderful person and they can list all their positive, positive qualities. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're resonating. It doesn't mean that you're going in the same direction. It doesn't mean that your lives are supposed to always be together. Like people grow, people change. And we have these rules over top about, about how that should happen. And a big part of that is of course, church, religion, marriage, that whole line of bullshit. Yeah. And so that process of, of coveting and that um, commandment with covet, what does covet mean exactly? Want. Both for myself and desire. The Want. Okay. Desire. So it's almost just like an indicator, kind of like how we talked about emotions in another community topics episode. And we like to, th we like to avoid the indications and just judge ourselves or the other person for the thoughts that we're having instead of doing neither and just looking at what it's indicating and, and looking at the fact that it's indicating something about the situation that we're currently in. And maybe there's a, there's an energy buildup kind of like with any feeling that we have inside that we call, you know, excitement or anxiety or nerves or enthusiasm or, or whatever. It's, it's a bubbling up of a feeling that is indicating something, but we focus on what we want to call it. We try and come to this state of certainty about it. And we're, we're very quick to judge that desire, that want, as opposed to looking at what all is behind it and looking at everything that's leading to that desire. And, and maybe the things about the situation that we're currently in that we're not willing to face. So then we just see the desire and then we just box up the things instead of facing them, push them off to the side. And then either judge ourselves or act upon that desire. Like we either suppress that desire or act upon it as opposed to seeing it merely as that indicator and then looking at where it's coming from. But it can be uncomfortable to look at where it's coming from because it may lead to a conversation that isn't as comfortable or 
a willingness to look at ourselves and why we have this sort of desire, why we feel like we need more than what's already happening, more out of ourselves or more out of the situation that we're in, as opposed to being full and complete in ourselves. Why do you even need someone else to not only help you with something, but fulfill you and complete you in that sense? Like, I think a big part of this is coming from the bullshit idea of like, oh, you complete me, you know, statements like that. Like, I'm not whole on my own. I need you. And then if that you're feeling like that person isn't fully completing you, then there's going to be a gap in that completion. Say you feel like 50% of your needs are fulfilled by yourself and 50% are fulfilled by your partner. And if you see that they're only fulfilling 40% and these are just fucking arbitrary percentages here, then there's 10% that you need fulfilled from something else. And so the coveting comes in, I guess, as an attempt, I don't know, like a subconscious attempt to to fill that, but it's not really about the other person at all because it was never their responsibility to fulfill that 50%. And so it's that illusion that they were that causes it because you never had control of them. You're only able to have influence really over yourself and being responsible for you and your responses to reality and the situations that you're in that, that void that you're trying to fulfill that you're passing off to the other person is really just your own that you're trying to fulfill. And so it always just comes back to you. It's never been about the other person, but as you buy into that whole narrative, if they're not meeting it, there's going to be that, that gap, that space, that void that was always there. You were just kind of masking it by thinking that someone else could fulfill it, but they never, ever could. It always comes down to you. It's so very interesting to me that a religion that says don't cover your neighbor's wife practices marriage, which is almost a surefire way to get somebody into a mentality where they can't confess how they're feeling or communicate how they're feeling to their partner for fear of the marriage ending. And that is the problem is that we talk about infidelity and we look at it as this terrible, terrible thing. And it's because it does hurt the other person, but that's because it gets to the point of being sexual infidelity rather than an honest conversation about diverging interests, about a change in the nature of the relationship. And it's because we go into relationships like they are in themselves the victory. I'm in a relationship. Woo! I made it. And that's it. That, that's how we look at it. Instead of recognizing that a relationship every step of the way is an opportunity to see where we are needy, where we are codependent, where we are not expressing ourselves, where we're not being authentic. Relationships are an opportunity for us to take the work that we're doing and continue that work. And if we find ourselves thinking to what could be with somebody else, what could be somewhere else, what could be if I was someone else, that's where we recognize that we're not fully involved with what we're doing. And it's perhaps because we're not willing to be honest, because we are committed to some idea that we feel bad for betraying, which is funny because that's exactly the view that we have of infidelity itself. Yeah, because a relationship isn't just a thing. Like we we put it in a box and, and we have an idea of it, but relationships are as fluid as your entire life. Like a relationship is a representation of a situation that you're in. It's not the situation itself. Like we think we're in or out of a relationship and we're always in constant flux between different types of relationships. And it's really our relationship to our environment, right? Like it's always that dualistic experience is relationship itself. Like that perception of division is relationship. And so we use other people and say like, oh, I have a relationship with this person. I have a relationship with that person. But all relationships are a, are a reflection of your own experience because they are your experience. Like all of it is. And every relationship that you have is, is an expression of that sort of mirror. Like everyone you meet, every every relationship that you're in, every, every interaction that you have. Like relationships aren't just long-term things. You have a relationship with the person that you walk by on the street or maybe you gave a wave to or maybe you ignore. That's a relationship too. But even that, like, you can't, it's it's harder to build an idea of that sort of relationship because it's not something that society sort of reinforces. There's certain types of relationships that society has ideas of 
which is just us, but as a collective, we maintain ideas and maintain relationships that should be had. And, and then they should be had in certain ways. And then you should be getting this out of the relationship and they should last for this amount of time. And there has to be this commitment because we're so fucking afraid because we're so afraid of, of uncertainty of letting go of letting go of that control. And so as we cling to the control that doesn't exist, there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be, of course, there's going to be byproducts to that. And as we maintain an idea of what it should be or what any relationship should be, there's it's going to create conflict, which is going to create like equal and opposite reactions. Like the tighter you squeeze to an idea, say, take a marriage, for example, you think your value is derived from being in that marriage, you're going to sacrifice cer certain things in order to maintain that marriage, despite it being completely hollow and shallow and, and totally hollowed out, like not being anything of substance, but because just being in the relationship means something about you, you'll sacrifice everything else for it. And, and, and so it creates this sort of almost natural response, like in the equal and opposite direction, because just as a collective, we cling so tightly to certain ideas. So then we try and maintain that as opposed to being willing to let the whole thing go and continue to be fluid throughout our lives. So we'll hold on to that and then try and get away with everything we possibly can within it if it isn't something we want to be in anymore. Because we don't feel like we have a choice. We feel confined to remaining in it. And then everything within our experience, as long as we maintain that, we feel like we can get away with or we feel like it's justifiable because we have to maintain the overarching idea of the relationship or the show that I'm still in a relationship. And therefore, I have more value than I would have if I wasn't. I find it so appropriate that infidelity applies to marriage and religion because if you think about it marriage is a religion marriage as a belief structure for something you should do for the rest of your life the idea of getting connected to a person and having that person in your life forever until you die regardless because you've made this promise is also this promise of false certainty of false happiness of false everything like and all you're doing is destroying the life that you could have otherwise had and I'm immediately reminded of arranged marriages, which is a terrifying idea. I've known people who are in arranged marriages or who are growing up to be in an arranged marriage. And just the idea that, well, okay, we've arranged a marriage for you. Then you're married. Just stay with that person for the rest of your life and you'll be fine. And it's just, there's nothing about being alive in that. There's nothing about being independent. There's nothing about finding yourself it's just hooking on to someone and hoping for the best, having some children and then arranging for them to get married to somebody else as well. And I understand, again, in a different time period, this would have been a different story because there were different considerations back before the world became the way it is now. I still don't think that necessarily would have justified arranged marriages, but I can see where the mentality would be like, well, it makes sense. We want our daughter or our son to be with somebody who isn't a dick. Right. And especially coming from cultures that usually had some kind of a hierarchical system, like if the caste system or something like that, the, the marriages were arranged to be with certain families or certain uh, classes of people. And so, of course, they were arranged by the parents who were also within that mentality. But yeah, the point is, is I think where I was going with all that is marriage is so much of an underlying belief that every single religion has decided that it can grant permission to be married. I find that super interesting as a religion would want to use something that everybody believes in and then once again, put themselves in between it. This is something that uh, in my relationship with Melissa, I was always very adamant about that nobody tells us we're married. Nobody has the wherewithal the position in the universe to go yeah now you're together like it just seems like a really really weird belief and it is but you want to know like this is meant to be or that it will last and so you look for the person 
in the authoritative looking hat to say that to you. And so religion immediately is like, well, we're a religion. We should start marrying people and burying people because people are looking for, again, some go-between to deal with grief as well as insecurity, as well as a relationship and all of the uncertainty that goes with that. That's fascinating. I also think that's probably why the uh, the state got involved with marriages as well. It's just a passing off of responsibility, right? It's I'm not going to take responsibility for how I'm feeling, what I'm going through my life. I got to look for someone else to do it for me. Someone else to, to figure this out and take responsibility for this relationship, this situation, this death, this process, because then they're, they're going to tell me, Oh no, they're, you know, you go to a funeral and they're like, they're in heaven with God now. And it's like, oh, it feels so good. They're just fucking wing. They're doing it live up there. They're like, I don't fucking know. They're like, oh yeah, but this feels good, right? Yeah, it feels real good to know that they're still exactly who you think they are, hanging out with all their relatives and siblings. And yeah, it's a very soothing idea. It's a complete crock of shit. It's it's totally made up. Like it's just like someone was like, "This sounds good." They're like yeah, and and people are like, "Yeah, that does make me feel good." And someone else is like, "Yeah, but they just made that up." And they're like, "Shut up! You can't say that. You don't know that. You can't confirm that." It's like you can't confirm anything that they're saying either. And they're like, "Yeah, but it makes me feel good." It's so interesting how we play that game. But with the uh, with the arrangement of things and the inevitable tension and stress that that causes. It's like we, we prioritize the minimization of risk over the maximization of life or the potential maximization of life. Like is someone arranging a marriage, just the mentality that goes into doing that. It's like, this will guarantee at least a degree of safety, a degree of certainty as opposed to if we don't arrange this maybe this will happen maybe that will happen it's the same as feeling like you're unsafe in the world and so you lock yourself in a box for your entire life it's the same sort of mentality yeah there's the potential for a lot more safety but what the fuck kind of life is that what the fuck kind of life is laying in your bed under your covers all day because you're afraid of leaving your room you know it's like that is, yeah, it's it's probably safer, I guess, than a lot of the things you can do to a point. But at what cost? And people don't want to consider the cost. It's like, yeah, there's the risk of something happening. But there's also a life to be lived. And, and so the more we glom on to this false certainty, control, feeling better, feeling safer as opposed to actually experiencing the fullness of the spectrum we do things that are cutting our experience off more and more because we'd rather decrease the risk and that's become the priority decrease the risk of not being happy by placing yourself in a situation that's not very happy but at least you're not god awful miserable and and alone because that's i guess people's biggest fear too is is being alone so at least you check that box you get an arranged marriage you're not going to be alone but you're still alone the whole time you're alone in your experience and there's that false idea of being together you know not not being alone because you're always alone and so we will do these things have the be create these relationships arranged marriages in order to create the illusion of not being alone for our entire life because that's our biggest deepest fear and so to avoid our our deepest fears will sacrifice so many things just to avoid that. Just, just taking a step above that. It's like a tiny bit better than being alone forever is being with someone else and miserable forever. At least you're not alone. It's like at what fucking cost? It's the cost of your life. The cost of everything that comes with all the ends of the spectrum and the entirety of this experience. Yeah. There's risk to living, but fucking a, at least you're living. This reminds me a lot of our uh, dating and relationships workshop where we were talking about the mentality that often leads 
to relationships falling apart before they've even really had a chance to get firm roots in the ground. And it's because we go into it looking for something that's going to satisfy something that we're not willing to deal with ourselves. And so I think the point of this topic being voted this week was one of two things. Either the person who has voted for this is thinking about cheating on their partner or or possibly already has, or they have been cheated on or they're concerned about being cheated on. So the question is, what do we do with all of that? And, and so on the one hand, what I would say is that if this is a temptation for you or if this is something that you have done, just end your relationship. I mean, you may, you may as well just be honest about it because the fact is, is that more than likely you've gotten into a relationship looking for something. You didn't feel it was satis that you were satisfied in getting that thing in the relationship. And so you went looking elsewhere, right? And now you're justifying it and you're, you're saying like, you know, but I've committed and so on and so forth. And, and, and you're just, your heart's not in it. And if it was, it wouldn't have happened. And, and you may as well just accept it and move on. But if you're afraid of being alone, if you're afraid of not being validated, then you're more than likely going to want to stay in the relationship and you're going to continue to hurt the other person, even if they don't know, even if they don't know, you can feel that shit in a relationship. You really can. So it's important to remember that we, as we change our relationships change. So this goes to the other side. If your partner is cheating on you, for example, or is thinking about it and you're worried about it or something like that, ask yourself, if you have been growing as a person and if you've been growing as a person and they are not growing in the same way or they're going in a different direction, are you just holding on to this? Like if you feel like they're leaving you in terms of their commitment to you in this relationship, do you really want to be the kind of person who's always keeping tabs on them? Do you want to be the kind of person who's giving up more and more of you and your life for the sake of concern about this? Or do you want to just recognize that perhaps the signs are right in front of you that this is coming to an end and you've been resisting it as well. And I, I understand none of this is easy. There is so much gray area when it comes to this topic as a whole, but I think it really does come down to this fiction that we have that every relationship you get into should be the one that lasts forever. And you don't go into friendships like that. Often you don't, and it's because you recognized in grade school or high school that you're going to make friends and you're going to lose friends and then you're going to make better friends and then you're going to lose those friends and then you're going to learn how to be a better friend yourself and then you're going to make a different you know, kind of friend entirely. And there's, there's this evolution that goes with it. The same is true for being in a relationship romantically or, or sexually. It doesn't necessarily mean just because you're in a relationship that that's the relationship that's going to last forever. Because what does that depend on? neither of you ever changing that's impossible and some people do that some people will get together right after high school they will stay together for years and years and years but they'll stay in the same town they'll know the same people very little about their life actually changes and they just continue to have a modified version of the same relationship that they've always had but that's very rare and it has its own costs while it sounds very cozy there is a lack of change there is a lack of uncertainty there is a lack of risk of spice of flavor in that life and so it's really important to recognize that as much as it would be nice for the person that you are with to be the person you're always going to be with that may not be what's best for you or them perhaps this is the lesson that leads you to the relationship down the road where you you in fact are able to be in it without losing yourself without losing sight of that other person because you're not so needy and you're not so feeling a sense of lack, right? That is, of course, if you ever want to be in a relationship ever again. And that's the point is that you don't have to. You are always in relationship with everyone and everything. The idea of being attached is an option. You don't have to be. And if you are, recognize that that is work. It is work to be in a relationship with someone all the time because you're both changing. And so you can't ever stagnate or there is a price. Yeah. I feel like this whole conversation starts to shift when people let go of the idea that a relationship should last forever, that it should last for their entire life. If you, if you started to think about romantic relationships in the same way, as you said, as a friendship and saw that there's, there's a chance you could, go through a number of long-term relationships throughout your life there like you start to see marriage and like till death do us part and that whole shtick as such 
a mechanism of a desire for control and certainty. Like that's all it is, is another variation of our desire for control. That's all that it is. But as that shifts, the conversation around infidelity and and the stress and concern that comes with that is because I'm sure there's a lot of people who, because they feel locked into this forever, it's like the only option because they don't see ending the relationship as an option because they see it as such a massive failure, as such a loss in value, as a betrayal of the commitment that you made in that fucking church when you got the fucking ring and all that ceremonial made up bullshit that happened. It's like you're you're going against everything you were told that got you value. You know, you grew up dreaming about your princess charming or prince charming or or person charming or or whatever. And then you felt like you got them. And now you feel like you have to maintain them. And then, and then you have to cater to them. And then you're not being yourself. And then you're buying into this whole thing. And then you feel like you can't leave. And then the only way out, it's like it's like a product of a need. And it's only because we have this made up fucking idea that it needs to last forever that I'm just holding so tightly to this certainty and going a step further and recognizing that you are eternal, even the whole shtick of till death do us part starts to feel like not forever because we think our lives are limited because you think you are what you think you are. You know, you got 70 to 100 years approximately that till death do us part is forever but it's not even the relationship that you're in the reality of you it's still just a blip in the entirety of your experience with another iteration of you that's all that it is and so the more you recognize that you're eternal the less stress you have to maintain this for this iteration of this experience that you're going through's lifetime and then there's a lot less weight taken off. And it's really just a releasing of the weight. And sometimes the releasing of the weight of the expectation of that commitment is enough to see things a little bit differently. And then you may decide to stay with that person for longer. A lot of times it's the weight and the, the, all of everything that comes with that commitment and desire for certainty. The trade-off is the stress, is the tension, is the feeling like you need to maintain this thing that maybe you don't feel like you should be anymore. But because you made this commitment, you feel like you have to. But as that as that perspective shifts and we let go more and more of the idea of till death do us part, this whole conversation, every conversation around infidelity and everything involved in relationships and how they should look and what they should be totally changes. It's so very interesting that we lose sight of how a good relationship establishes a foundation, which is for you to not need one which means to enjoy your life, to enjoy each and every moment as much as you can, to not be thinking like, if only somebody was here, this would be better. That is not where you want to go in terms of looking for a relationship. You want to be enjoying your life. You have the opportunity to, through being by yourself, really get good at being by yourself, really enjoy your existence as a whole. And in doing so, in being interested, you become more interesting and you become a little bit more lively, more enjoyable to be around because you're not looking for validation all the time. So you're uplifting other people because you can. And in that moment or in that state of mind, you might meet somebody else who appreciates that. And then all of a sudden you have a relationship. But in that relationship, it's important to remember how you got there and not lose what you've been doing. Just because somebody else is tagging along with you now doesn't mean that you should stop living for you. Because that's what brought you together. So as long as they're doing the same and you're doing the same, well, then you're walking along the path together. The commitment is to walking the path with as much awareness and responsibility and empathy as possible. And that's when we resonate with people and we're able to walk the path with them. But then what happens if we're not careful is that the commitment becomes to being together. Then all of a sudden what you're really betraying is the idea that you should be together because you're no longer in the relationship anyway. And so when we're talking about infidelity, it really does create a kind of a misunderstanding because we think they're betraying the other person. But the reason that they're even at that point is because the relationship itself became the betrayal. 
the relationship itself became the distortion over what had brought them together. And unfortunately, sometimes that even starts before the relationship even starts or, or begins in terms of it being uh, driven by need or the idea that we should be in a relationship. Now I'll have value, you know, that kind of thing is that's immediately a rocky start to any relationship. But uh, I just want to mention to the listener, check out the dating and relationships workshop, because we talk about a lot of this in terms of, of building the foundation before you ever get to the point of infidelity. So this is kind of like the other side of the spectrum, um, but they are connected. They absolutely are. It really is important to be committed to your existence. And by virtue of that, as a result of that, you will have more to give to anybody who does join you in your path. But if you are trying to keep them there, if you're trying to get them there, then there is less of you for them to share in. And the whole thing starts to dry up. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how we look at something like infidelity as being a thing, you know, on its own, whereas it's really like an iceberg, you know, tip of the iceberg. The infidelity is the tip of the iceberg. There's a fuckload of iceberg under the water. There's a fuckload of things leading to an action like that that are uncomfortable to look at. And and because we have this underlying, as Ray was saying, commitment to the idea of the relationship itself as opposed to a commitment to yourself continuing to be yourself and whatever plays out from that which sometimes means that the relationship comes to an end but because we skip over that whole thing or lose sight of that whole thing and it starts to be me being in a relationship is where i derive my value as opposed to me being an expression of my value there are byproducts to that commitment as it no longer aligns with what the reality of your life is doing. And so there's going to be drastic measures taken because you feel cornered because it feels like maybe the only thing you can do, but the infidelity is just the tip. And, and it's uncomfortable to see that we want to think like, Oh, it's just infidelity itself exists in silo. And that's all it is. And it's like, no, there's a massive buildup. There is a massive expectation. There are all these ideas that go into it. And so many of the things that so many of the illusions that we have about relationships and the the commitments that we have and and the certainty that we hold on to leads to byproducts it's kind of like not to get too fucked up here but like the church telling priests that they can't get married of course there's going to be fucked up byproducts to that they're squeezing them so hard that there's going to be stuff that slips through the cracks of their knuckles and shit like there's going to be byproducts to restricting the way that things are going against reality, committing to something, trying to find this certainty that exists beyond the experience that you're having right now. If it exists beyond today, there's no guarantee of that. But we try and overlay this guarantee and we're like, yeah, that should definitely work out. Of course, there's going to be fucked up byproducts to a commitment, to an illusion and to a to a false guarantee just because it makes you a little bit more comfortable feeling like you can be a little bit more certain, a little more in control when you aren't. You never are. It's just the illusion of control that causes us to you know, pay a little bit less attention to the experience that we're having. And it could literally be a little bit less attention to the experience that we're having because we got that box checked in a relationship with a person. We're committed forever. See, don't you see the piece of paper over there? We're committed forever. And it's a total avoidance of the reality of what's actually happening. And so- infidelity something like that is is just a byproduct of our commitment to illusion it, it's it's a way of expressing that it's an inevitable byproduct to that desiring and and clinging to a state of control a sense of control a sense of certainty that doesn't really exist just because you think it exists just because you have the illusion of it doesn't mean that it isn't not an illusion which is why i opened this episode with a thought about not committing to dualistic unity, not committing to Andrew or myself, not committing to the community, but committing to yourself. Make this path about you. And then we can all continue to resonate together organically rather than cling to one another to face the uncertainty that is life. That's not helping anyone. Let's charge forth in enthusiasm, in relationship together because we want to be, not because we need to be, and recognizing that that just means being together. It doesn't mean being a certain thing. Relationship is something that happens when we are together and we're always together. So we're always in relationship. Let's just work on the quality. 
And I think that is a fantastic spot to wrap this episode up. This has been a lot of fun. I knew this would would be a fun one to uh to dig into and and kind of go round and round and, and got a lot in about just relationships in general and how you know that that infidelity is a product, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that goes behind it. And as Ray already mentioned, if you want to hear more, we do have a workshop all about everything that goes into even even before you get into a relationship and sort of the mentality that can help that be as as free and as fluid and as fulfilling as uh as being alone can be because at the end of the day <laughs> you're always alone but i appreciate you tuning into this one this has been a lot of fun i look forward to chatting with many of you soon and do remember this was community topics number 39 the next one's going to be community topics number 40 and i'm hoping it's a good one if you would like to participate you can suggest a community topic on our discord channel or you can vote on the community topic in the next episode on our Patreon page. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.